Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn how we can set up a very first neural network, fully connected neural network with the help of Keras in Colab. So for this video and following all the other videos in this series, you do not need to have any sort of a fancy hardware or anything or any background in, uh, in fancy coding or knowing any sort of uh, uh, artificial neural network libraries. So uh, the library which uh, we are going to use throughout this series is Keras and uh, from the very basics, we are going to Im start implementing stuff. In this particular tutorial, we are going to uh, uh, go through an entire end-to-end -end, uh, uh, training process of uh, uh, setting up an uh, artificial neural network for image classification problems. So the data set which we are going to use is MNEST. MNEST is a very famous uh, toy data set. By toy data set, it means the kind of a data sets which we use for teaching artificial intelligence. And uh, I'm going to get into the details of this data set, okay? And maybe we are going to use this data set in uh, for future videos as well. Okay, so in this video, we are going to set up a fully connected neural network. No fancy kind of a neural network, no CNNs, no RNNs. By the way, I'm going to expect that you already have a theoretical background of AI or deep learning, right? And in these videos, we are going to focus on uh, hands-on, on implementation, right? So it's going to be a, a neural network which has a, a only going to have a, a fully connected links or you may see a pure artificial neural network or, uh, or multi-layer perceptron. Okay, and then we are going to do a bit of its evaluation. So the so basic stuff stuff is that it's going to be an end-to-end full-fledged process, full-fledged project. Okay, uh, starting with the first uh, few things, uh, let's import the first two libraries. The first two libraries are related to the processing of the data and uh, they are NumPy and Pandas. So NumPy and Pandas both are used for the data manipulation. Uh, whenever I'm going to use it, I'm going to refer back to them. Okay, so in the first uh, three, four lines, what I'm doing is I'm just importing NumPy. So this is the uh, syntax to do that. You write import NumPy as NP. So uh, uh, so writing this as NP means that you're going to refer to this library by typing the short keyword NP. You may write your own name here, but NP is a common term. Okay, same is the case with pandas. So I'm importing pandas as PD. So, uh, right. The next thing is uh, matplotlib. Okay, so matplotlib is a library that is related to uh, doing the image uh, processing kind of a kind of a processing kind of tasks. But for this particular, as it's amnes, so I'm going to show you what kind of a data exists in this data set. So that's why I'm importing this library. Um, if we don't do that, there is no need of it for the time being. Well. Uh, usually, you when you are going to see the codes written by uh, AI community. They usually refer matplotlib library as PLT, right? So that's what I did. Talking about this particular line, so this particular line is just to set up the colab for some particular settings so that we can uh, see the output of the images when we are going to print them on the screen. So you can straight away ignore this line for the time being. Okay, importing the data set. So, as I mentioned, Amnas is a very famous toy dataset. So Keras is, has a collection of few such famous datasets. Amnas is one of those. So in, uh, in order to import it, you, what you can do is you can, you, you can write this line. What you do is you write from keras.datasets, which is actually a collection of datasets, import this particular dataset, which is Amnas. Right. Next, calling this function amnas.loadDate underscore data is going to return you four uh, numpy arrays, right? Now, the word numpy comes here. Numpy is a kind of arrays, it's a data type that is used for uh, machine learning or deep learning or any other mathematical calculation relating tasks. So, usually the data type of data set that is being used by the ML or DL libraries is M. And numpy okay so it's going to return you four numpy arrays okay if you hover here it should show you the type of uh, these these objects so you can see it's nd array nd arrays means numpy type arrays okay and it's also showing you the shape of the array right okay so basically 
it's going to return you the two chunks of the data that is the training and the testing okay for this particular project we are not going into fancy stuff like uh, early stopping or fancy stuff like uh, uh, cross validation etc we are just going for the very simple thing that is divide the data into two chunks training and testing okay moving forward okay okay so uh, the next thing which we are doing is uh, is is basically counting the unique uh, train labels unique train labels means the type of the number or you may say the tie uh, or or the number of classes we are counting the number of classes inside the training and the testing chunk okay so basically what mnest is it's it's actually pictures of handwritten numbers like here i have printed them i have printed some random part of the data set so as the numeric keys are from 0 to 9 so we would have 9 classes 0 1 so on to 9 and here we are printing the number of samples of each class okay you may say why that's needed is that needed for this particular project no it's not needed for this particular project if i remove this entire code still everything's going to work but usually it's a very important factor when we are dealing with uh, training neural networks so uh, following some videos we are going to get into the technical uh, details of that as well so for the time being these two lines are doing what they are just counting the unique numbers of individual classes inside the training and testing data set and here is the output of that okay next thing so uh, next what we are doing is we are randomly just printing uh these samples uh, why we are doing that we are doing that to actually know what is inside the data set right another thing is that uh, we are we are uh, 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 we are interested in knowing whether the data is properly included or not okay again removing this entire chunk of code even this visualization part is not going to affect the data we know the data when we have this output and when we hover to these it shows us the data type we should be sure that the data is properly included anyhow coming to this part what we are doing here is we are randomly generating some indexes okay and those indexes are from 0 to 25 so np is again referring to numpy the random rand int is going to generate a random number between this and then that index is being used to assess the data from among the training data chunk and then we are combining those small images uh, and plotting them and again we are referring to matplotlib library so what we are doing here is we are we are creating a matrix of five by five images right and those images are having uh, the subplots of uh, of the data available right okay moving forward coming to the main part of the project and that is designing of the neural network okay so so uh first thing first uh keras dot model type of the model that is sequential okay so um in keras you can make the models in two ways one is that you actually tell it that what layer of a neural network is going to connect to what part of the neural network like we do have fancy neural networks right like resnet where where the links are not directly connected uh, concatenated one after another right but as in this example uh, we are only going to have a uh, neural network then in which all the layers are going to be successively connected so in that case uh, we can go for um, our programming becomes easier we have an ease of sequential kind of models okay so if that is the case what you need to do is you need to import this you need to import sequential from the kinds of the models the keras has then the layers okay so in this particular neural network which we are which we are going to make uh, right now uh, we are going to just have the fully connected layers and going to apply activations to them right uh, there's no even no need of dropout right so okay so i'm importing two layers from this class keras dot layers then that's they are dense and activation okay moving forward okay counting the number of labels right 
so again calling that np dot unique from y train y train what it's doing is it's turning me the length of the number of classes which is going to be nine in our case right okay next uh, some utility stuff okay so for training the neural networks uh, for classification problem we need to have uh, 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 the one hot representation why that's important well uh, that's important for the training of the neural network uh, it reduces the bias i'm not getting into details of that but in general um, uh, whenever you're going to see a classification kind of a model it's going to have a one hot uh, notation one hot output so what is one hot this picture depicts that let's say we have a data set which have uh, three different kind of colors that's red yellow and green okay what we do is we assign numbers to them let's say we assign one to red two to uh, um, let's say green and three to yellow and then we convert that to one hot by one hot we means that uh, uh, that the particular neuron corresponding to that particular bit or that particular class is going to be one and others are going to be zeros let's say one hot representation in neural network okay so yeah so what they do is one two three four five they assign the numbers to them and then they create that much that much outputs so that particular output corresponding to one let's say yeah this is a better one so we have one here that means that this particular class was actually the one detected okay and that is the case the other are going to have the value zeros so for doing that uh, we have a utility in keras and uh, and we import uh, that this is the way to import that i'm importing the m and utils from it and from m and utils i'm call, calling two categorical so what it's going to do is uh obviously the output samples whichever zero one two three we, we want them to be uh zero 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 one zero 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 two means like if we are going to have one it's going to be this one zero 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 nine zeros okay one two three four five six seven eight and nine so for two the uh the shape is going to be something like this zero one and the remaining zeros will be going to be there right something like this right okay okay so this is what we are doing here so the shape of these y train and test train are going to be changed from uh, 1 to 9 okay then the next thing is for this particular project we are using fully connected layers so the images these images were were square in shape what i'm doing is i'm converting them to a vector right so that i can get that vector as an input for that uh, this is what I'm doing. So the input size is the image cross image because we are expecting it's a square, right? And we are getting that square shape with the help of this. So y uh, x underscore train dot shape one is going to give you this. 32, I guess. Sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. It's going to return you the shape of the square or or basically this thing this upper part if you multiply that by this you get 784 so calculator 32 cross 32 28 cross 28 yeah it's 28 cross 28 so the images are 28 cross 28 you multiply 28 cross 28 you get 784 okay next thing is i'm normalizing the data well there's no need of that for the time being but it's just a good uh, practice to do that so for that what you do is uh, uh, you divide that by 255 because it's it's a uh, um, 
ग्रे स्केल इमेज राइट नेक्स्ट थिंग इज आई एम सेटिंग द बैच साइज एंड द हिडन न्यूरो नेटवर्क न्यूरोन साइज सो यू कैन सेट इट टू एनी थिंग ओके नाउ कमिंग टूवर्ड्स दिस पार्ट ऑफ द मॉडल दैट इज Uh, adding the layers to the model. So basically, as I mentioned, we imported the sequential. So uh, the way to create a model is you initialize a variable, you keep it equal to sequential, and then you keep on adding the layers. So the way to add that is you call model dot add, add the kind of a layer. The layer we want to add is the dense layer, right? This word keyword dense was imported here. and then we write the number of neurons and for the first layer we are adding the shape of the input right which we have calculated as this after that i am applying a layer of activation and for activation i am telling it it is relu it can be anything it can be tan hyperbola it can be any other activation sigmoid whatever you want then calling the summary okay the calling this uh, keyword summary actually prints you the summary of the model which you have designed so it shows you the output shapes of each layer and the number of parameters that layer has right and again the total trainable parameters the total parameter etc and other good way to visualize the network that you haven't made any mistake is to visualize it and for that you make use of this particular uh utility visual util and you simply need to uh give the variable name to it right Ma you import the function plot underscore model you give the name of the variable to it you write the name of the file you want to save it so basically it's going to save into that file here it saved it and then you show the true shapes is equal uh, shapes to uh two underscore shapes equals true so it's going to plot the model this is good when you have some fancy kind of models like resnet etc when you declare the model you know the model is correct as per your needs uh then you need to compile it so for that you call the compile function variable name of the model compile and then you're going to tell it the kind of the uh, loss on which you are going to uh, do the training uh for our case it's cross entropy loss because it's classification problem you need to tell it the optimizer which can be anything like in my case i am telling it adam it can be rms prob extra then matrix on which you are going to do the evaluation it can be loss it can be accuracy after that you know you tell it how to compile it now is the time to training so for training you need to give it the train data you need to tell it the batch size and the epoch size the way to do is you call the model and you call fit function of it and simply pass the data to it once the training is done you can evaluate it and the way to evaluate is again simple evaluate function give the uh, testing data to it and the batch size is going to give you the loss in the training values here we are getting 97.9% accuracy next thing is i'm plotting the confusion matrix so i'm not going to get into the details of the code of that but you can use my code for this uh, uh we are going to talk about the details of confusion matrices in some other video so uh majorly we can see majority of the classification part is here so it's doing good classification so simply run it let's see it's going to be trained in few minutes or seconds everything is fine everything is imported it's training the model hmm it's going it's taking 3 seconds for one epoch we have 20 epochs so around 1 minute thank you very much for this video um uh, do give me your feedback if you're new to the channel please subscribe and uh, do let me know what you want from uh, from me on in this channel um i will try my best to incorporate all of your requests okay let's wait so by the way uh for the time being everything is running on the cpu right uh it's good to change it to gpu right we are going to do that in the next video when we are going to deal with the cnns okay okay so we have the accuracy we have the plot that is for this video thank you very much let's meet in the next video